Number five of the five things that tabletop gamers do wrong is uh, failing to adopt a helper. Uh, there's a bunch of helpers out there. Some are free, some are a little bit more money. Um, and guys are doing stats by hand. Um, and I think that uh, regardless of how much you love stats by hand, um, it's a dice game. And um, I believe that we enjoy playing the game and... A subsidiary of, of the playing the game is the keeping track of the, the stats. But I thought the, the analyzing the stats and just being entertained by the stats is really ultimately the, the whole point of it. Um, it's not actually keeping the stats. So um, I believe that uh, one of the things that we do wrong is we fail to pick up a helper to help us with the stats and what it ends up doing is slowing down our progress. It limits how many uh, replays we can do because, of course, half the we're, we're spending. I always found that it took me longer to keep the stats than it did to um, actually play the games. Like I could play the games and uh, pretty quick, and uh, and then I had to stop and and stop playing the game and start tallying all the stats. And um, nowadays, with all the metrics, there's no way you're going to be able to tally all the stats that you actually would, would, could easily get by using a helper. So this is number five. Number four. Looking at individual stats and basing the... Uh, judgment of the game that you're playing based on individual stats versus team stats, which is more representative of a larger number of die rolls. So um, re remember for the percentages to come out, um, realistically, we need to roll dice uh, thousands of times. So as a team, you have rolled dice thousands of times. With a player, you may be looking at only 500 rolls or maybe 200 rolls or maybe even 100 rolls. And some guys are looking at games after 20 rolls. So uh, it's more realistic and you're going to get a better sense of um, the realism of the game when you look at a larger number of rolls. Uh, whether it be 10,000, 20,000, 100,000, the more rolls, the better, and you're going to ba basically uh, uh, even out, if you will. So uh, number four, I would have to say that a lot of guys are going to look at um, uh, Joe Morgan hitting 37 home runs versus the 29 he actually hit, and um, they're not going to be looking at how the team as a whole actually hit exactly the same amount of number uh, or the same uh, number of home runs that um, they actually did in reality. And I think we, we, we lose that, um, that perspective when we're just looking at individual stats because, you know, dice are hot and cold. When you're rolling 550 times for a player, um, you may have been on several hot streaks and, and that player is going to, or, or I've had, for example, in my 59 replay where Hank Aaron, uh, he cannot roll a 66. But in my 19 replay with Eric Davis, I believe I rolled a 66 every time he batted. You know, and he, he was still close to the home runs he hit. I think he hit five more than he did. Uh, but literally, sometimes you get hot and cold players, and that's the reality of dice games. So number four, I believe, is when we opt to look at individual stats and, and, and base a game on uh, the individual stats versus the group stats as a team, as a whole, and a larger number of die rolls. Number three, your vision is not the vision. Whether you like uh, pitcher card first, batter card second, batter card first, pitcher card second, 
uh, if you like, um, you know, 50-50, if you don't like 50-50, if you like adding the dice for every base running decision, including, you know, the pitcher hole rating, the catcher's throwing arm, you know, the right fielder, the being held on, if you like all that and, you know, and there's, if you like fast action cards or if you hate fast action cards or if you like the dice and or you hate the dice uh you like using an online app to roll the dice or you don't like using it to roll the dice all that is fine and dandy just remember that your vision is only one vision and it's not the only vision so um maybe perhaps you can be a little bit more open-minded uh but that's a little bit pushy on my part. So uh, just be aware that this is the third thing that uh, tabletop gamers get wrong. Number two. Basing a game on a series, I'm going to either like or dislike a game based on a weekend series that I'm going to play between two teams. I pull two teams and I'm going to roll some dice and I'm going to try to learn the rules. And if the three scores are, you know, uh, seven to five, nine to eight and, and five to four, then the game runs hot. If my results are one to nothing, two to one, and and three to nothing, then the game runs cold. Uh, so this is, I think, one of the key mistakes or the number two mistake error that uh, tabletop gamers make when they're trying out a new game. Uh, they try to sometimes even less. Sometimes they won't even play a series. You know, will play one game half a game or two games and I've seen it happen you know where uh, two teams will hit you know three home runs each in the first five innings and it's unrealistic you know uh, so I think the number two mistake or things that uh, things that we do wrong uh, is that we kind of really play a short have a short experience with the game and then try to judge the game and then speak our opinion on the game and spread kind of misinformation uh, about the game based on, you know, uh, a very short experience. Or we go into the game with preconceived notions and, and of course, we play one game and, and suddenly it uh, whatever happens is going to kind of um, uh, support those preconceived notions. So... Um, judging a game on, on too short uh, an experience with it is, I think, one of the, the number two thing that we do wrong. And uh, I would encourage, um, you know, playing 10, 20, uh, 30, 30 games to get a sense of, you know, not hot, hot or cold dice, which could happen, but just a sense of how does it really play at least. You know, um, so even you could even say that 10, 20 games is really not enough. That would be, uh, I guess, 10 games would be three series. Uh, 20 games would be uh, six series. Um, but definitely at least, a, at least a month of games to, to kind of get comfortable with the game, understand the game a little bit, and just get the, the, the good uh, rhythm to the game, um, and so on. Number one, thinking that splits are the driving engine behind all of baseball. If this game, this new game that I'm trying, doesn't come with splits and those splits are not at the forefront of the game, meaning I have full total lefty righty splits on everything that I do, every role that I take, okay, whether it be from the pitcher, whether it be from the batter, then 
the game is deficient in some way. I feel that this is a common misconception. Um, and if you look at the history of baseball and if you look at year by year stats, you know, it's the, the lefty left handed pitchers over left handed batters have the most noticeable advantage. Um, and then from that point on, it becomes less and less until you have right handed pitchers versus right handed batters. And there's not much of a change there in general. Okay, so if you're, and, and this is, I believe, the number one thing that many of us do wrong, and that's to think that everything must be wrapped around in um, splits. And if it's not, then there's some sort of deficiency with the game, when in reality, a well-designed game may have splits sometimes where those splits come into play sometimes and sometimes they just don't come into play meaning there's a you know the the splits didn't have an effect on the at bat it was just a really good pitch that the pit, the, the batter struck out on or it was a really terrible pitch that the batter hit out of the park it didn't have to do with whether it was a lefty or a righty uh throwing the pitch you see, so I think uh, it's, and, and it has to do, of course, how we've been trained and so on and so forth. And, and, and a lot of us believe that. But I think we, uh, this is the number one issue with that a lot of people have problem with. Uh, the, this preconceived notion that splits is the driving engine but behind, you know, every pitcher-batter interaction. And that's it. The five things that tabletop baseball gamers do wrong and we all do it to some extent